Good morning, Grade 12s. My name is Colleen Callahan, and I'm the English Subject Advisor in Nelson Mandela Bay Metropole. I'm based in Port Elizabeth. Welcome to this lesson on Grade 12 Poetry. This lesson is for English home language. I hope that each one of you tuned in today is safe and well in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Before schools closed at the time of lockdown, you would have started the poetry for grade 12. Your teacher would have done maybe four poems with you. So the purpose of today's lesson is to have a bird's eye view of the poetry. We will discover some of the poets, some of the poems that you will meet along the way. And we will then look at one poem in great detail, Felix Randall by Gerard Manley Hopkins. What you will need for this lesson is your poetry anthology or copies of the poems, whatever your teacher has given you. You will also need some paper and a pen or pencil to write with. I'm now just going to turn off my camera and then we will proceed with the rest of this presentation. Our presentation outline. We are journeying through grade 12 poetry. And in this journey, we are going to meet people who are the poets. And each one of those poets will come from a specific country. Every journey will have a landscape. And in this journey, the thing which is most important in the foreground is the text, the poem itself. Every poem has its context, its background. And we will briefly look at the background of the poets and the background also of the society in which they lived. But remember that for assessment purposes and in your final exams, the focus of the questions is always on the text itself, the poem. Every poem will have themes and then every journey has its destination. That place where you stop for a while and explore in greater detail. So the destination of this presentation will be the poem Felix Randall by Gerard Manley Hopkins. And there we will have a look at the theme and ideas, and we will discover what the intention of the poet was. We will see what the form and structure of the poem are. We will also analyze the tone, the mood, the language usage, and the imagery. So the people we meet along the way are the poets. And here is a wonderful quotation by one of the poets that you're going to study, W.H. Auden. And Auden says, a poet is, before anything else, a person who is passionately in love with language. Isn't that a wonderful quote? And it's their love for language. They're playing around with language, which makes the study of poetry so interesting. And so we come to our itinerary. The wonderful thing about grade 12 poetry is that it's world poetry. You study poems which originate from various countries. So let us look further at the countries we'll be visiting in this poetic journey. We begin our journey at home. There are three South African poets. We have Masisi Kuneni, who wrote First Day After the War, Roy Campbell, the poet of Zulu Girl, and Jeremy Cronin, who wrote Moto Ke Moto Kabato Baba. We then travel to East Africa, Malawi, where we encounter an African thunderstorm, which is written by David Rubadiri. Our next stop is Northwestern Africa, Nigeria. And in Nigeria, we meet Ben Okri, who wrote an African elegy, and Chinua Achebe, who wrote the poem Vultures. Heading north across the Mediterranean Sea and towards Europe, we come to Ireland, where we meet Cecil Day Lewis and his poem A Hard Frost. Our next stop is across the Atlantic Ocean. We come to the United States of America and meet the very interesting poet E. E. Cummings. E. E. Cummings, that poet who played with language, plays with punctuation, breaks all the language rules that you've ever learned about. And 
you get to experience some of that in the poem somewhere i have never traveled our final destination is england here we get to meet william blake and his poem the garden of love christina rossetti and her poem remember wh Auden and his famous poem funeral blues and finally gerard manley hopkins and his poem felix randall the landscape of the journey when we talk about landscape of our journey we're going to meet some of the technical terms of poetry right we will first have the background of every poem and the background is the life of the poet and the context of the poet that social context in which he or she wrote you then have what you call the middle ground the middle ground is my context your context the context of the reader how you view life and understand the poem and your middle ground comes into effect in the exams when you're asked to give your opinion and it's very important that you say my understanding of an image or a word is the following and then we get what's most important the foreground the poem itself and i will emphasize that the questions in your assessments and in the final examinations will be on the text of the poem not so much on the background of the poet signposts are very helpful when we are going on a journey because they show us direction they also call to mind important aspects important places where somebody might like to visit and the signposts in poetry which give us some direction are the themes and if we look at the grade 12 poetry there are four major themes you get the theme of nature the theme of love many of the poems focus on the theme of persevering through oppression and then finally we get the theme of death mortality and remembrance an african thunderstorm and a hard frost both focus on the theme of nature E. e. Cummings, Somewhere I Have Never Travelled, focuses on the theme of love. Six of the grade 12 poems focus on the theme of oppression, persevering in times of oppression, and triumphing over oppression. These poems are First Day After the War, The Zulu Girl, Morto Ke Morto Babato Babang, An African Elegy, The Garden of Love, and Vultures. And finally, we have the theme of death and remembrance. Christina Rossetti's Remember, W.H. Auden's Funeral Blues, and Felix Randall by Gerard Manley Hopkins all focus on the theme of death and remembrance. We now come to the destination of our poetic journey. That place where we're going to pause, stop for a moment, and explore in greater depth and detail. And here follows an exploration of the poem of Felix Randall by Gerard Manley Hopkins. And now we'll have a reading of the poem. Felix Randall by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Felix Randall the farrier. Oh, is he dead then? My duty all ended. Who have watched his mould of man, big boned and hardy handsome, pining pining till time when reason rambled in it and some fatal four disorders fleshed there all contended sickness broke him impatient he cursed at first but mended being anointed and all though a heavenlier heart began some months earlier since i had our sweet reprieve and ransom tendered to him ah well god rest him all road ever he offended this seeing the sick endears them to us us too it endears 
My tongue had taught thee comfort, touch had quenched thy tears. Thy tears touched my heart, child. Felix, poor Felix Randall. How far from then forethought of all thy more boisterous years, when thou at the random grim forge, powerful amidst peers, didst fettle the great grey dray horse, his bright and battering sandal. I know something about the background of Gerard Manley Hopkins and the background to the poem. Hopkins was born in Essex in England in 1844 and he died in Dublin in Ireland in 1889. He was only 45 years old when he died. Religion played a very important part in his life and his upbringing. His family were a very devout Anglican family. For them, religion and church was not something you only did on a Sunday. It was part of his daily life. They prayed together as a family. They went to services together as a family. In 1866, he became a Catholic. He studied at Oxford University and he joined the Jesuit order and was ordained as a Catholic priest. The motto of the Jesuits is all for the greater glory of God. And once his Jesuit superior gave him permission to write poetry, Hopkins saw his writing as a way to spread the message of God's grace to all people. Jesuits do not live isolated lives in monasteries. Instead, they work in society and minister to the needs of people. The Jesuit philosophy of finding God in all things influenced Hopkins' poetry, which celebrates God's presence in nature and in all aspects of daily life. His poems present a loving God with whom we share our honest feelings and questions about the mysteries of life and death. Hopkins is a Victorian poet, but he's a Victorian poet with a difference. Other Victorian poetry was very critical of industrialization. And in general, Victorian poetry does not have religion as a theme. Whereas Hopkins as a poet, he accepts the realities of life. He thinks that nature and urbanization can coexist quite comfortably. And in his poetry, religion has a major focus. Hopkins experimented with sprung rhythm. Sprung rhythm, it's a rhythm where you have a stressed syllable in a line followed by a series of unstressed syllables. And it mirrors the rhythm of natural conversation. And now something about the background to the poem Felix Randall. The persona, who's the speaker in the poem, has been inspired by Hopkins himself. The sonnet is dated April the 28th, 1880, and it was written while Hopkins served as a parish priest in Liverpool. It focuses on the life and death of Felix Spencer, who's called Felix Randall in the poem, who was a farrier who lived in a slum area of the city and died on the 21st of April, 1880 from tuberculosis. Hopkins ministered to Felix Spencer during the last year of his life. He visited him often, and gave him the last rites before he died. He also conducted his funeral and his burial. Hopkins changes his surname from Spencer to Randall in order to conceal the man's true identity. So grade 12s, how many of you know what a farrier is? Well, if you have a look at that photograph on the slide, you there's a clue there. A farrier is an ironsmith who makes shoes for horses. So they will make that horseshoe out of iron, they'll beat it into shape. Um, they first smelt the iron, make it very hot make it red hot and then they hammer that shoe into shape and then they hammer that shoe onto the hoof of the horse. A 
If we look at the themes of Felix Randall, the poem has a main theme, which deals with illness and death, the illness and the death of Felix Randall, the farrier. And then it has sub themes. The one sub theme is the ministry to the sick and the dying or caring for somebody who is sick and dying. And this is what the persona does. He ministers to the sick and dying Felix Randall. Another sub theme is celebrating and remembering the life of the one who has died. And now we come to a task for you to do. The task is explain how the main theme and the sub theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines one to four. There you will see lines one to four. Felix Randall the farrier, oh, is he dead then? My duty all ended, who have watched his mould of man, big boned and hardy handsome pining, pining, till time when reason rambled in it, and some fatal four disorders fleshed there or contended. Now I'll ask you to take a piece of paper and we'll give you two minutes just to copy that table onto your piece of paper. Right, so your two minutes starts now, the clock will be counting. You copy that table onto your piece of paper. And now take five minutes to complete the task. Right, so the clock starts ticking now. Five minutes for you to complete the task. There's the task, a reminder, explain how the main theme and sub theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines four.
Right, so let's see how you did. Here are some suggested responses. The main theme of illness and dying, the first four lines, the lines, oh, is he dead then? The repetition of the words pining, pining, and then fatal four disorders. The sub theme of caring for the sick and dying, we have my duty and who have watched. And then the theme of celebrating and remembering the life of the one who has died. There's the line, his mound of man, big boned and hardy handsome. That line reminding us how strong Felix Randall was before he was struck down with tuberculosis. Our second task asks us to explain how the main theme and the sub theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines five to eight. Sickness broke him. Impatient, he cursed at first, but mended being anointed and all, though a heavenlier heart began some months earlier, since I had our sweet reprieve and ransom tendered to him. Ah well, God rest him all road ever he offended. On your paper, take two minutes to copy this table. So the main theme, illness and dying, and the sub-theme, caring for the sick and dying. Two-minute countdown starts now. So copy that table. And now give yourself five minutes to complete that task. Your five minutes starts now. Your task, explain how the main theme and sub theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines five to eight.
So let's see how you did. Here are some suggested responses. For the main theme of illness and dying, we have sickness broke him. Impatient, he cursed at first. Though a heavenlier heart began some months earlier. And then the sub-theme of caring for the sick and dying, we have being anointed and all, referring to the Christian tradition of anointing the sick with holy oil. And then we have months earlier since attended to him. We now progress through the poem and our task now is to explain how the main theme and sub theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines 9 to 11. The seeing the sick endears them to us, us too it endears. My tongue had taught thee comfort, touch had quenched thy tears. Thy tears that touched my heart, child, Felix, poor Felix Randall. And now you'll take two minutes to copy this table onto a sheet of paper. Your two minutes begin now. And now you take five minutes to complete the task. There's the task. Explain how the main theme and sub-theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in lines 9 to 11.
That's a hard and do. Let's see, here's some suggested responses. The main theme of illness and dying, thy tears, the chose is suffering, and then poor Felix Randall. And then caring for the sick and dying, this seeing the sick endears them to us, us too it endears, and my tongue had taught thee comfort, touch had quenched thy tears. That shows us how he comforted the ill and dying Felix Randall. Right, so moving on through the poem and our exploration of the theme. So now we look at the last three lines of the poem, lines 12 to 14, and explain how the main theme and sub-theme are highlighted through the words and imagery in these lines. How far from then forethought of all thy more boisterous years, when thou at the random grim forge, powerful amidst, amidst peers, didst fettle for the great grey dray horse, his bright and battering sandal. So take two minutes to copy this table onto a clean sheet of paper. Your two minutes start now. The sub-theme, celebrating and remembering the life of the one who has died. And now take five minutes to complete the task. Your five minutes begins now.
And we have a look at the response. So in the final three lines, these words and imagery all refer to the sub-theme of celebrating remembering the life of one who has died. First one is, thy more boisterous years, thou at the random grim forge, powerful amidst thy peers. That shows his strength in former days when he was hard at work and then did fettle for the great grey dray horse, his bright and battering sandal. And there we have a photograph of a dray horse. A dray horse is a very large working horse. You can see, look at the size of those, of those hooves, the size, the thick of those legs it's a very very strong horse and they pulled wagons and plows and farms so they were very very strong animals we now move on to the form and structure of the poem this is a sonnet with 14 lines divided into an octave and a sestet now a brief analysis of this of the sonnet the title felix randall it introduces us to the person honored in the poem it's significant that the person honored is very humble and not world famous. This suggests that Hopkins is interested in celebrating ordinary people and believes that all people are worthy of being honored regardless of their social standing and fame. The effect of God's law of nature on life is presented to us in the octave. In the octave, the speaker gets news of the death of Felix Randall, the once healthy and strong farrier to whom he ministered during his illness. The question in line one, oh, he is dead then, implies the speaker's grief on receiving the news and may also be rhetorical, encouraging thought about death as the passage to eternal life. The duty is his priestly role but also refers to the duty of every person to visit the sick as laid out in scripture. The speaker observes how disease robs Felix Randall of his strength and reason. As his parish priest, the speaker ministers to Felix Randall as he struggles with the loss of his strength and also worries about his spiritual wellness and the state of his soul. The fatal four disorders refer to the wounds caused by the original sin of Adam and Eve, and these are weakness, hatred, ignorance, and lust. The speaker is Felix Randall's spiritual healer who helps him to accept his illness and prepare to meet God after death. In the sestet, the relationship between the healer and the healed is presented. The healer is the speaker, and the healed is Felix Randall. The word us in line nine suggests the close bond of compassion, trust, and empathy that forms between the speaker and Randall. Both Randall and the speaker are out of their comfort zone. The once strong Randall struggles to accept his physical weakness. And the speaker may have struggled as he ministers as a parish priest to humble workers in Liverpool. In, and Randall, we know, lived in a slum area. The first three lines of the sestet, they suggest the speaker's grief over Randall's illness and eventual death. The word poor implies the empathy that the speaker has for Randall in his suffering. And Randall's former strength and health are celebrated in lines 12 to 14 of the sestet. And besides being a sonnet, this poem is also a dramatic monologue. And a dramatic monologue is a poem in which the persona presents his or her thoughts and experiences. So if you've got a question such as what makes Felix Randall a dramatic monologue, this could be a suggested answer. The speaker shares his experience on hearing of the death of Felix Randall. He also shares his memories of ministering to him during his battle with TB. And then this poem is also an elegy. An elegy is a poem which honors and celebrates the life of someone who has died. So what features make Felix Randall an elegy? And a possible response would be 
the poem honors the life of the farrier, Felix Randall, who has recently died. If we look at the tone, now tone is a term which refers to the attitude of the persona or the speaker to the subject matter of the poem. Right, so it is the attitude of the speaker to the subject matter. This sonnet has a very interesting tone. There is a shift in tone. In the octave, the tone is very neutral and matter, matter of fact, as if he's just reporting on the illness and death of Felix Randall. Whereas in the sestet, the tone shifts, it becomes far more personal and celebratory as the speaker thinks back on how he ministered to the dying Felix Randall and then how he celebrates his life. And two aspects create the tone. One is the diction, the poet's choice of words, and then the imagery. So a task could be explain how the diction and the imagery in Felix Randall bring about the shift in tone from the octave to the sestet. And for a question like that, this could be a possible answer. Right. The octave, it has a very neutral matter of fact tone. The imagery has to do with watching and observing. Also the imagery of suffering and words which bring that about are watched. The past tense verbs broke, anointed, cursed. They introduce a very objective tone, attitude of reporting. And then the name and occupation of the dead man is mentioned. He's a farrier. And then there's also words of suffering, pine, pining, and sickness broke him. Right, the sestet is very personal and celebratory in tone. And if we have a look at that, the imagery of caring and compassion, there's imagery of suffering and also imagery of strength and vitality in the last three lines. And here we've got seeing the sick, comfort, touch and quench thy tears. That all shows caring and compassion. And then the form of strength and vitality are brought out by words such as boisterous years and powerful. The mood refers to the feelings that the poem stirs up in the reader. So how do you feel as you read the poem about Felix Randall? A possible response could be the image of death and suffering gives me a mood of sadness. I've got a very compassionate mood because I read of how the speaker cares for the suffering Felix Randall. And also a mood of admiration and appreciation comes up in me when I hear of the former strength of the family. Just to emphasize, when we examine the language of a poem, we look at the poet's choice of words or his diction and the noticeable language features that are present in the poem. And when we look at imagery, we look at the use of figures of speech and we explain how the figure of speech adds to the meaning and theme of the poem. Right, so examples of language usage. Felix Randall the Farrier, oh, is he dead then? That's a rhetorical question. We also have repetition of pining in line three. Right, the effects of that, the rhetorical question stirs up thoughts of death, memories of Felix Randall's suffering and the disbelief that he is dead. And the repetition of pining emphasizes his suffering. Examples of imagery, sickness broke him. We have personification there and then alliteration of the bee in bright and battering sandal. Right, sickness broke him, this personification. Sickness is like a destructive person who breaks his body as he suffers from TB. And then alliteration of the B emphasizes the words bright and battering. These words highlight how physically demanding his work as a farrier was, as he skillfully made the shining horseshoes from the metal and had to hammer and hit the molten metal into shape. Thank you, Great Wells. We've come to the end of our time together this morning. I've enjoyed presenting on your grade 12 poetry. It's been a wonderful journey. And as you proceed with the year, I wish you everything of the best. And please keep well and keep safe. Goodbye.